is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. Here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Father, lead us now and guide us and direct us as we study thy word. For Jesus' sake, amen. I want you to turn in your Bible, and I want you to read with me today John 12 and verse 48. John 12, 48. And after reading this verse of Scripture, I'm going to continue the discussion that we started on yesterday. Now listen what it says. In John 12, in verse 48, He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Now, beloved, read that verse, and read it, and reread it, and listen to what it says. Jesus said, He that rejecteth me, he that rejecteth me, get it, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in that or in the last day. Now, the word of God stands as the judge to judge every sinner who rejects the Christ of the Bible. With that in mind, I'm going to continue today the thought and the discussion that people say, I'm not ready. I'm just not ready. I'm not ready to be saved. I want to be saved. I'd like to be saved, but I'm not ready to be saved. All right. Now, Jesus said, the words that I speak will judge you in the last day. Now, what's he talking about? Here's what he's talking about. Jesus said, that is, the Bible says, and of course, uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost are one. They are the Godhead. They're one God in three persons. Now, the Holy Ghost dictated the Word of God to holy men, and they wrote down what God dictated to them. And we have the Bible, the Word of God. Now then, what does the Bible say? Jesus said in John 6, 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Underline those three words, in no wise. Now you say, preacher, I'm not ready. Now let me say this. Jesus is ready. He said... They that come to me, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the young man, the young woman, whosoever, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it's not God's will, it's not the Father's will that any perish. And Jesus said, They, him, whosoever cometh to me, I will in no case, in no wise, under no circumstances, will I cast out. Your part is to come. Now, what readiness does it take to come? In other words, in Luke 14, the discussion that we read, the verses we read as a basis for our discussion, the Bible says, A certain man made a great supper and invited many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, come, for all things are now ready. What did Jesus say on the cross? What did he say in his dying hour in Luke, uh, in uh, John 19? What did he say? He said, that It is finished. It is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. What did he say in John 17? He said, Father, I have finished the work you sent me to do. I've completed the plan of salvation. I've done what you told me to do, said what you told me to say. I've lived the life of righteousness untouched by sin. In other words, I've done, I've completed the work that you sent me to do. And then in his dying hour, he said, Father, it is finished. And, beloved, 
You cannot add anything to a finished product. And you can't take anything away from a finished product without destroying the perfection of the finished work. Now then, the words Jesus said that I speak will judge you. You don't need any man or you don't need any person to judge you. My words will judge you. What did he mean? He said, come unto me and I will give you rest. They that come to me I will in no wise cast out. They that call on me shall be saved. Confess your sin. I will forgive your sin. So, beloved, it matters not what you say that you need to do or you need to confess or you need to make right or you need to straighten out. The Bible says, come. And if you don't come, the words that Jesus spoke will stand as a judge to condemn you because you didn't come. Let me tell you something. This Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. We're saved by grace, that's God's unmerited favor, through faith. And Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The nobleman who brought his son, to, or rather who went to Jesus and said, Jesus, my son is at the point of death. Go to my house, heal my son. Jesus said, you won't believe unless you see signs and wonders. You remember the story? I don't have time to go into detail now. You'll find it in John 4 and uh, the last part of the chapter. And you'll find there that this dear man, uh, he said, uh, Lord, come down to my house ere my child die. Jesus said, go home, thy son, live it. Now then, the nobleman didn't open his mouth. He didn't say a word. He, he went home the next day. He went home. Why? Because he believed. He believed what Jesus said. Now listen. If he had not believed what Jesus said, then the boy would not have gotten well. Now you can say what you please. Listen. The, the Lord Jesus said, Thy son liveth. Thy son liveth. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't go down to the house. He didn't go to the bedside. He didn't lay his hands on the child. The man said, My son's dying, and he'll die unless you come. But Jesus said, Thy son liveth. Go thy way. Go home. Thy son liveth. The man believed the Lord. He believed the Word. Now then, all the readiness, all the readiness you need to be saved and to stay out of hell is to believe that God so loved the world that He gave Jesus to die for you. That Jesus told the truth in minute when he said, Come and I will give you rest. Believe it. Come unto me. What must I do when I come, preacher? Come unto me, Jesus said. How must I act when I come, preacher? Come unto me, Jesus said. What must I feel when I come, preacher? Jesus said, Come unto me. Come unto me. Listen, you do the coming. You come. You submit. You commit. You believe. And you leave the rest to the Lamb of God. He'll take care of it. And he'll save you and wash your sins away. And he'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. You're just as ready to be saved as you'll ever be if you are hearing the Word of God now, believing the wages of sin is death, knowing the gift of God is eternal life, desiring to stay out of hell and make heaven your home, and down in your bosom... There is a desire to be saved. You're just as ready as you'll ever be. You say, but Brother Green, I tell you, I, I think I ought to go pour my liquor out, and I think I ought to throw my cards and dice and all that stuff. And preacher, I think I ought to clean out my magazine rack, and I think I ought to go over here and apologize to my neighbor. Listen, brother, sister, friend, God help you, God help you, God to help you. Listen, works follow salvation, and confession and uh, uh, restoration and, and apologies, uh, they accompany salvation. But you're just as ready this minute as you'll ever be. Now give your heart to Jesus, bow your head, confess your sin, call on God, and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. And he'll wash your sins away. And then those old things you need to make right, he'll give you the grace to make them right. He'll give you the strength and the courage to go to the people you've wronged if He wants you to go. There's some things that can't be made right. There's some things that cannot be straightened out from the physical standpoint. But hallelujah, they can be put under the blood from the spiritual standpoint. The thing that I'm trying to do, 
And tomorrow we're going to change our line of thought. But the thing that I have tried my best to do on yesterday and today is to show you, beloved, that it's the devil. It's nothing but the devil that's telling you that you're not ready. Listen, I don't believe out of the thousands of people that I know will hear this program today, and there will be thousands on many stations to hear this program, to listen to this statement that I'm making. Out of the thousands, if I could see every one of you, I don't believe that we have two dozen atheists, agnostics, free thinkers, and uh, uh, scorners. Now, what I'm saying, let me say it this way. Let me approach it from the other angle. I believe that 99% of all of the listeners to this program today are sincere. You know, hypocrites go to church. But hypocrites don't listen to a radio preacher that preaches the naked, unvarnished Word of God. Hypocrites and Sadducees and Pharisees and, 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 uh, and God-haters and church fighters, they, they don't listen to me, not many of them. They may listen one time, and that's about all they can stand. Now, I believe that 99% of my audience today is sincere. You want to make heaven your home, you don't want to go to hell. Many of you are saved, sure, to be sure, many of you, great, great percentage of you who listen to me today are saved. But there's a, there's a great number listening to me right now that you know you're not saved, and you're afraid to die, and you dread the thoughts of dying, and it scares you to death to think of dying. And you know that you're not prepared, you're not ready, and yet the old devil's telling you that one of these days you'll be ready, one of these days you'll be in a position. Let me tell you something. The devil never has asked a man or a woman to sign a contract to go to hell. He don't want you to sign a contract. He don't want you to say, Mr. Devil, I promise you upon my word of honor that I'll never be saved. He don't want you to do that. He just wants you to give him one broadcast at a time, one altar call at a time, one church service. You go to church somewhere today or tonight, and, and, and God speaks to you. And the old devil will say, now, listen, you're not quite ready. Now, now wait a minute. Now, now you, you're going to be saved. You're not going to hell. No, sir, you know better than that. You... You're a good person anyhow, and you don't do anything so bad. You're not quite ready. I'll tell you, there'll be another time. Now, don't rush into this thing. Be sure that you know what you're doing, and be sure that everything's just right, and be sure that you're going to be able to live it, and be sure that you're ready, and you're just not ready. Now, don't go tonight. That's all right. Raise your hand for prayer if you want to, but don't go. Just wait now. Be sure. See, that's the devil. That's the devil. Listen, Jesus said, today is the day. Now, right now, look at that watch on your arm. Look at it. Come on. Look at the watch on your arm. Look at the clock on your mantle. Look at the clock on the dashboard of your automobile as you ride down the road. Look at it. Look at it. What time is it? What time is it? Where's the hour hand? Where's the minute hand? That's the time. That's the time. Fifteen minutes from right now may be too late. Ten minutes, maybe too late. Five minutes, maybe too late. Two minutes, now. You say, preacher, can I be saved in two minutes? You can be saved in ten seconds. Bow your head, shut your eyes, and if you're riding in an automobile and you can't shut your eyes or bow your head, just look straight down that highway and down in your heart say, God, I'm a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. He'll save you no sooner than you speak the words from your heart. You say, is it that simple? Yes, sad but so. Many people are stumbling into hell looking for some gigantic religious stir when salvation is the gift of God by childlike faith, believing, receiving, accepting what you can't see, feel, or taste believing what God said because God said it. Now, let me hurry because my time's about gone. Listen, let me tell you something now. You can be saved in five seconds, two seconds, three seconds, however long it takes you to make up your mind down in your heart that you want to be saved and then say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner, and save me. And that's it, brother. The publican in the temple said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, save him words, and God saved him. The thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Nine words. God saved him. God saved him. Now, let me tell you, 
I read John 12, 48. Mark it in your Bible. John 12, 48. Jesus said, there's one that'll judge you the words I speak. Now, what did he say? Jesus said, in the Bible, if you'll confess your sins, I'll forgive you. If you'll call on me, I'll save you. If you'll come unto me, I will in no wise cast you out. That's what he said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now, the words that I've read in your hearing, the words of God that I've read in your hearing will stand to condemn you unless you accept them and believe them. Listen, the same sun that melts the ice and changes the hard ice into water, bakes the clay, and changes the soft clay into a hard brick. The same gospel received saves that same gospel rejected brings condemnation. And this is condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. John 3, 19 and 20. Read it. Verses 18, 19, and 20. John 3. Read them. God help you. Jesus said, the words I speak, they will, they are, they will judge you in the last day. Now, what I've tried to do today is this, simply this. If you know that you're lost, if you know that you're not prepared to die, and if you know that you're on the road to hell, and you don't want to die in your sins and open your eyes in the pits of the screaming, you're ready to be saved. You're ready. You're ready. Jesus had confessed your sin. I'll forgive them. Now do it. Jesus had call on me. I'll save you. Do it. The publican did. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Call on him. Jesus had come unto me. I will in no wise cast you out. Listen, in no wise, under no circumstance. You come, Jesus said, come. If you're hungry for God, if you're thirsty for salvation, if you want to be saved, come to Jesus. Come to Him now. He won't cast you out. He'll take you in. He'll save you. He'll write your name in the Lamb's book. And He'll do it right now, this very second. Don't say, I'm not ready. You're ready if you want to be saved, down in your heart, if you have a desire now, in your heart now to be saved, you're ready now. And the sinful things that stare you in the face, God will show you what to do about them after you're saved. That is, the restitution, the apologies, and the straightening up and straightening out. God will lead you. If you'll give Jesus your heart now, he'll go with you, he'll guide you, he'll show you, and he'll make everything right. He'll put all of your sin under the blood and remember them against you no more. And he'll do it right now. Father, the dear man or the woman, the boy or the girl that's been saying, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Oh, God, may they not say that anymore, but may they bow their head this moment, this very second, May they bow their heads and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake, and we know you will. Thank you, Father. In Christ's name, amen.